During World War II, MiG had not been a major influencer in aviation. The MiG-1 and 3 were similar in design and somewhat underperformed. It wasn't until the jet age that MiG suddenly shined. The MiG-15 was a simple but effective design. The 17 and 19 built upon it. The excellent MiG-21 was a capable fighter in the right hands. The Foxbat was impressive, but was not the fighter the West thought it was. But for the last fighter of its generation, MiG was about to create something special. The US had quite a large number of aircraft types at its disposal, a situation that troubled the Soviets. They were partly to blame for this. The MiG-25 concerned the West and the F-14 and F-15 were partly conceived to counter this threat. The MiG-25 turned out to be fast, but sacrificed maneuverability. Its radar was also not as advanced as first believed. It was not in the same league as its American counterparts. To make matters worse, due to the high cost of the Tomcat and Eagle, Congress agreed to fund a cheaper alternative, and out of this would come the F-18 and F-16, both very capable fighters. In contrast, the MiG-23 was inadequate, and the avionics were primitive by comparison. The MiG-31 Foxhound was a beast of an aircraft and the successor to the Foxbat. It featured improved radar and much improved missile systems, but for all its improvements it would remain another heavy interceptor and bomber destroyer. Two new aircraft were being developed, the Su-27 which was designed as a counter to the Eagle and the MiG-29 as a rival to the lighter Hornet and Falcon. Both Western fighters needed attention, but of the two the F-16 was of greater concern, as export sales for the fighter were expected to be good. The Su-27 was considered to operate at range and the MiG-29 would operate closer to the front lines, possibly within 100 kilometers. Individual country needs would vary for the 29's mission specs though. The MiG-29 did away with extensive riveting and went with an automatic welding. It was far less labor intensive than riveting, and they had started the process on the MiG-23. It was a modern design and utilized composite materials in order to save weight. The pilot would also have a helmet mounted sight. Costs were not as much a consideration and the 29 would have two engines rather than the Falcon's one. This gave the pilot a safety net. The MiG-29 was also extremely maneuverable. The Kremlin was very impressed with the MiG-29 and they upgraded housing for around 200 families who worked on the project. NATO gave their own names to Soviet aircraft and sometimes those names were derogatory like Fishbed or worse, but the MiG-29 was called the Fulcrum a name that was unofficially used by the Soviets as well. In 1984, the first MiG-29 unit was formed. Pakistan had purchased F-16s and India wanted to strengthen its own air force. April 1984 had two test pilots doing an evaluation, and they were impressed. India would place an order for 45 MiG-29s. In a somewhat unusual partnership given India's close ties with the West, India and the USSR had had a favourable relationship for some time. The Indian MiGs would be armed with Apex and Afid air-to-air -air missiles. They did not get the more advanced AA-10 or the AA-11s which were carried by their Soviet counterparts. The radars, however, would be the same. There were some production delays but India was holding firm that it would not accept aircraft that were downgraded. El Assad, president of Syria, had flown to Moscow to try and receive 80 MiG-29s for immediate delivery. Moscow had planned on their arrival in 1987. The Syrian MiGs would have less advanced avionics. The West's first real look at the MiG came in July 1986, when six MiG-29s would journey to Finland. Every four years beginning in 1979, the two nations would send each other some aircraft on a goodwill tour. The MiG-29s were unexpected, as the Soviets had never revealed new designs in this way before. The fighters would put on a series of impressive displays while they were in Finland. Sweden would intercept several MiGs over the coming months, and one such encounter revealed the AA-9 missile. This was carried only by the MiG-31 before. The West considered the MiG to be a capable fighter. The radar was thought to be more advanced than previous fighters, and it did feature full look-down, shoot-down capability. It also features IFF, which is vital if you're going to launch missiles beyond visual range. The canopy gives good visibility, but is far more tapered than those on the Falcon. The wings are excellent, and while they have a small drag increase at supersonic speeds, they provide increasing wing area, 
lower wing loading as well as an increase in lift. This all adds to its maneuverability. This can be seen at high angles of attack, which is a popular maneuver at air shows. The gun is located slightly in front of the pilot on the left side. This will certainly help with aiming, and all modern fighters now follow this principle. The Fulcrum's engines were initially rated around 18,000 pounds of thrust and used afterburning technology. Its thrust to weight ratio was excellent, and it was capable of impressive acceleration as well as rate of climb. The MiG was expected to take off from rougher airfields and possibly makeshift ones. The threat of engine damage in these environments was very real, and the designers worked around this by a system of doors which close over the inlets on takeoff and they only open when the nose wheel leaves the ground. On landing they close when the nose wheel touches down. The MiG-29 can fill a variety of roles and carry a mixed array of ordnance, including one 30mm cannon, the S-5, S-8 and S-24 rockets, the AA-10 Alamo, the AA-8 Afford, the AA-11 Archer, and six bombs. It has a crew of one, is around 17 feet long, max takeoff is around 44,000 pounds, and its max speed is Mach 2 plus. It has been heavily exported. Users include Algeria, Azerbaijan, Bangladesh, Belarus, Bulgaria, Chad, Cuba, India, Iran, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Peru, North Korea, Poland, Serbia, Slovakia, Sudan, Syria, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Yemen, Czechoslovakia, Romania, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Iraq, Moldova, and Germany. The MiG-29 has also gone through extensive upgrades through the years as well as a score of variants which have given it a lasting staying power which is impressive in the modern jet age.